If you think about it, even the ocean can be a desert. And I know it sounds like I'm just trying to sound cool, but think about it. If you're a marine mammal, you can't just drink seawater all the time, although some marine mammals have evolved the ability to drink seawater and their kidneys can handle it. Drinking seawater isn't the main way they want to do that because they can end up losing water. So the marine environment can be like a desert if you're looking for water. That's why some sea snakes have to lap up little pools of rainwater that form on the top of the ocean and they live all their I'm getting off track. Marine mammals, because the ocean can be like a desert, have evolved a couple different ways to conserve water, and one is called apnoistic breathing, like sleep apnea, and it's a cessation of breathing, like happens in sleep apnea, but marine mammals, to conserve moisture so they lose as little water as possible, try to breathe very infrequently. So instead of doing this continuous breathing like we do, they inhale, wait as long as possible, and then exhale. <sighs> that gets the most amount of oxygen possible from each breath, so uh, it limits the amount of breathing they are doing because each time you breathe in and breathe out, you are exhaling some moisture in that air, and so you're losing water over time, and so marine mammals try to get around that by very infrequently breathing, like they have sleep apnea, but on purpose, or porpoise. Yes! Welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all your comments, questions, and corrections and address them with the trident of science or the quadent of science or, if you're Aquaman, the pentadent of science. I don't know if that's the technical term. And then I give you a hint about what's coming up next on this channel. And that hint is, what? Uh, who? What? It's about memory. If he had a 10-pointed spear, it would be decadent, just like his gold armor. Come on! But getting right to it, on the last episode of Because Science, we were going through all the adaptations that a humanoid like Aquaman would need if he were to survive like a humanoid or a marine mammal under the sea. I said that he would need something like a swim bladder to deal with the potential damage from the bends. I also said he would need an Atlantean kidney to deal with the concentration of salt water that he would be dealing with. And I said that he would need some very complicated circulatory system, maybe some countercurrent heat exchangers to keep his hot bod nice and toasty. But what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from David Wilkins, who says, It's crazy that I'm watching this video while attending dive school, and everything is on point. <sighs> Down to the soda can reference we were taught this morning. Research was done here. I don't have anything to add. It just feels good to be validated. No matter how many points you're using. Oh. <laughs> Our next comment comes from Ben Quo, who says, Hey Kyle, love the show. Whoa! I was watching this episode and it got me thinking, could some of Aquaman's abilities come from him being able to emit and control sound waves from his body? When thinking about aquatic mammals, the ones I think of are whales and dolphins, and a lot of them seem to be able to use sound waves to communicate and sense objects at a distance. This got me thinking, maybe that's how Aquaman is able to communicate with underwater creatures. Well, like we talked about in the video, evolution doesn't work with what's perfect. It doesn't aim towards the most perfect version of something. It just goes with what works. And uh, using sound waves to communicate through water like whales and dolphins do and to sense objects like sonar, that has evolved because sound waves travel very, very well in water. And that has something to do with the speed of sound being many times greater in water than it is in air. And the speed of sound is basically just how quickly a wave of stuff can be transmitted through a medium. So if you have air molecules here, the speed of sound will be dictated by how quickly this can happen, kind of like dominoes, like ding, 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 all the way down. The speed of that wave as it propagates is the speed of sound. In water, H2O molecules are much, much closer together, and so when a wave passes by or some disturbances back here, it goes very, very quickly, and so sound can go a lot faster and a lot further in water, which is why whales and dolphins evolved to do that with their songs. So if Aquaman was going to communicate underwater with marine animals, then using sound waves would be a great idea, Ben. Ben, you get a 10.
Our next comment comes from Ninja Bear Films, who says humans have about 80 to 100 square meters of surface area to extract O2 or oxygen from the air. That's 20% oxygen. Ocean water only has about has about 0.6 oxygen. Oops. So if Aquaman's lungs can extract enough oxygen from seawater, it would need over 30 times more surface area to survive. Yes, I know he has gills in the comics, but we haven't seen gills in the DCEU movie Aquaman. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe I just missed it. You're right, Ninja Bear Films, frequent commenter, and that is why, again, evolution tried to deal with this problem because uh, the amount of oxygen dissolved in seawater is so much less than the amount of oxygen in air by percentage. Gills evolved to get around the surface area problem. So if you look at a picture of a pair of gills, it doesn't look like an empty sack, which is lungs. Gills have a surface area that is folded many times over. Instead of just, ha imagine you just had a surface area like this. This is a finite amount. Now take that same surface area and split it up into folds, and you have all this, all that, all this, all that, all this, all that, all this. So that's what gills are very basically, just many, 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 many folds to increase the amount of surface area that water can come into contact with. And increasing that surface area increases the amount of oxygen you get in total from that seawater, even though the amount of oxygen in it is much lower than it is in air. So Aquaman has gills to get around this problem, as you were saying, Ninja Bear Films. If Aquaman only had the surface area of lungs to survive in water, he would not be able to breathe. You are correct. But we'll get to another comment that has something to do with exactly that in a second. Our next comment comes from Christopher Howell, who says, Is your right eyebrow in a permanent upward motion? What? What is he talking about? <laughs> Which one is it? Which one is it? No one knows. Talking about Aquaman. <laughs> one pump, two pump. Double pump, full pump, half pump. <laughs> but the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I am giving to Hero Midam, who says, divers while doing apnea, diving without taking a breath, without an air supply, can rise up from any depth without any decompression sickness because the air in their lungs is always the same. Now this is very true. If you are not breathing underwater, breathing pressurized gas like scuba divers do, then you have a much better chance of not getting decompression sickness because you are not super saturating your blood and tissues with pressurized gas. However, there are cases of decompression sickness, or at least its symptoms, in free divers. But those divers get decompression sickness when doing many repeated dives near the surface and holding their breath and then exhaling, holding their breath, and doing that many, 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 many times over. So while it is true that Aquaman could simply just be holding his breath to get around some of the problems we mentioned in the video, there is still a risk of decompression sickness if Aquaman is going from the surface to the depths of Atlanta. Hotlantis a lot because then he might still get the bends. But for sending me down that rabbit hole of research, Harrow, you are indeed a super nerd. Ha -ha! But of course, I'm not always right. I almost never pronounce any of your names correctly. It's because I don't read them beforehand. So what did I get wrong this week? Our first correction comes from Yamanoki, who says, technically the definition for osmosis is the definition for diffusion, of which osmosis is a sub-phenomenon that only applies to the diffusion of water. Okay, yes, I did make this mistake. I'm sorry if it was confusing. The way I described osmosis and how your body fluids would want to flow out into seawater and make you a desiccated, mummified corpse floating in the ocean, but with great hair, I made it seem just like diffusion, uh, which is to say high concentration stuff flowing to low concentration stuff, like how heat flows from high to low or for pressure flowing from high pressure to low pressure. But that's not the case for osmosis. It goes the other way, from low concentration to high concentration, like the concentration of body water in you going into salt water with a higher salt concentration. And that only has to deal with semi-permeable membranes and stuff dissolved in water. So it's not quite the same thing, although it is a subset of diffusion, which has the... Okay, you're right. You got, you got me. You got me. Our next correction comes from Marc Oliver Oulet and... Sorry. And Laughing Pug, who says, if Aquaman had 2% body fat, like I said, you would be very sick or dead. Most people need between 10 to 30% or, you know, 6 to 7% if you're a bodybuilder. Aquaman is probably at 8 to 10%. Okay, fine. Just, just splitting beautiful hairs here at this point. Yes, 
I overestimated probably the ripness of Aquaman and therefore Jason Momoa sentient throwing axe. He probably doesn't have 2% body fat. It's closer to a healthy amount because he's not ripped. Like he, he's not like gross Hugh Jackman in the Wolverine cut where he dehydrated himself on purpose to look that vascular, which is very unhealthy, or uh, Dirty Grandpa, um, high school musical boy, Zac Efron, he's not that ripped, looks unhealthy to me. The point being that some marine mammals have up to 50% of their body mass as body fat, and if you're Aquaman, if you're a ripped actor like Jason Momoa or mustache Superman, then you probably have a lot less body fat than that. And that's my point, but you are correct, not 2%. That'd be even more dangerous than all the adaptations that I'm suggesting that he needs to get around the dangerous stuff. Our next correction comes from Ross Goosen and others who say, you forgot about pressure, 360 atmospheres or a lot of PSI crushing him, assuming he is the, at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. So he would be a frozen, shriveled, bubble-ridden mess the size of a soda can. Yes, you're correct. I did not mention all the perils of pressure that Aquaman would be facing if he goes to the ocean floor or to wherever Atlantis is. And that is because it would require even more very specific adaptations that I did not have time to get into, and they're a bit more complicated. So let me just mention a few for you. Unlike what the comics say, it's not about having like super dense skin, like the hull of a submarine. Deep ocean fish have very specific adaptations like uh, different cell membranes that allow different permeability for chemicals and other ions and proteins to pass through them and deal with the crushing pressures around them. Also, the enzyme shapes in those cells and in uh, their metabolism is different to deal with the pressure. Also, they have uh, different concentrations of chemicals in their body like urea, which which is in your urine, and they do not have air-filled sacs like many of the fish above them have in sea bladders, and like we suggested Aquaman might have. They do not have air-filled sacs because they would be collapsed by the high pressures. However, some animals still have air-filled sacs like lungs and dive to very deep depths, which Aquaman could do because animals like whales and seals, which dive very deep, can collapse their own lungs when they dive. And even penguins shut down almost all of their organs except for their hearts and their brains when diving. So Aquaman can have even more extreme adaptations, but that's just speculating at this point. And we don't do that here. But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode comes from Jason Molisani and others, but Jason's was the first I saw, who said, this was an interesting episode, but I wonder if the bends is something that is really a problem for Aquaman. You skipped over his breathing method, but I think it might be relevant. If the reason for the bends stems from higher pressure gases in the lungs, then what if the lungs contain no air when he is underwater? What if he's holding his breath or he uses gills to breathe underwater so his lungs would be temporarily useless? Do fish, if Aquaman is operating like a fish with gills, do fish experience anything like the bends? If not, then this should not be a problem for Aquaman. I love this correction because the premise is correct, but if you look into what we do to fish, it gets a little bit more complicated. So you're right, fish breathe with gills underwater and because they are in the environment that they're always in and not breathing pressurized gas or anything like that, they do not have the same uh, propensity to get the bends uh, just traveling through uh, their normal habitat. However, when we catch fish and bring them up rapidly to the surface, as you can imagine Aquaman going from Atlantis all the way to the surface, fish can and do get the bends. The most dramatic of these effects, which I will not show you pictures of, is their swim bladders inflating because of the reduced pressure on the surface, and their, uh, their swim bladders can get so big as they inflate that it pushes like their organs out of their mouth and their eyes bulge and it's really horrible and gross. But beyond that, I found papers that do show that bubbles come out of the blood and out of the tissues and cause the bends like we see uh, in humans. So fish can get the bends and Aquaman could still get the bends if he was using gills to breathe. Why this is my super nerd comment is because I found a paper showing what you can do to help alleviate the bends in fish. Fish can get the bends if you are bringing them up on a line, say you're catching them from as little as 10 meters down, like 30 feet down. And what the authors of this study suggest is if you wanna keep these fish alive and then you know bring them to an aquarium or throw them back or whatever, you should bring a needle that has nothing on the other end and stab it in a very specific area to deflate them. 
Don't worry, I'll save you. So for making me look up pictures on how to deflate fish properly, you, Jason, are indeed a super nerd. <laughs> Now, if you are subscribed to Alpha, which you can do at projectalpha.com, <laughs> you already know what the next episode of Because Science is going to be because you saw it two days earlier than anyone else and you've seen other premium content from Nerdist, Geek and Sundry, and myself. But if you have not subscribed to Alpha just yet, the next episode of Because Science is... Wait, what was it again? I can't remember. Oh yeah, can Deadpool regenerate memory? That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are speculating about the limits of superhero-style regeneration. We know that characters can regrow whole limbs, and Deadpool can even canonically regrow his entire head. But would everything inside his head return with this level of regeneration? Could Deadpool get all of his memories back if you decapitated him and then he regrew his head? Ooh, think about it. And then remember it. And then watch the video. <laughs> So, go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet, all about Aquaman and the many adaptations that he would need, and leave me all of your nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at because science right here on Instagram and Facebook. And don't forget,